Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be looking at creating width, we're going to be looking at various methods for creating width and we're also going to be looking at using sends and returns for getting certain groups of instruments to fit in a certain place in the stereo spectrum. So let's jump straight in, this is a little project um, I'm working on, just a groove at the moment, um, but let's have a quick listen and then we'll pick out some elements that could do with a bit more width. Okay, cool. So it's quite a sort of straight groove going on there at the moment. And then you can see that I'm playing with a few different melodic elements, um, just kind of fitting them in and then really building this track from there. So the first thing I wanted to look at was this little glitch effect here. So let's solo this and take a listen. Okay, so it's kind of like some sort of phasey glitch. I've added a little bit of saturation here. Um, but what would sound really nice, I think, with this one is if it was nice and wide. Um, so at the moment, if we listen again, it's bang in the middle. It's got a bit of stereo information, um, but it's pretty central. And then when we hear that in the mix, it kind of gets a little bit lost. Okay, so I'd like that um, to kind of just fill out um, the side information a little bit more. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called the Hass Effect. Now, this is a plugin from uh, Kilo Hearts, um, which have some really good tools um, and I use quite a lot. Now, I am going to show you how you can do this with Ableton stock plugins as well um, so that anyone can achieve this. Now, basically, how the Hass Effect works, it's a... Um, it's a psycho audio phenomenon, I think is the correct terminology. And basically what it does is it delays one side, one channel, either left or right channel. And then the difference in time tricks our ears into thinking uh, the sound is wider apart. Um, so let's have a look how this plugin's working. Um, I can set my delay time here and I can choose which channel I'm going to delay. Now uh, this in milliseconds is a very short amount of time so it's not going to be um, audible in the way um, that a normal delay would be. It's just very very slightly knocking off um, the timing on one side. So let's have a listen and let's have that off. Okay, so you should be able to hear the difference there um, that is now sounding really, really wide and it's kind of like floating over your ears. It doesn't sound like it's bang in the middle there. It's now going really, really wide. Um, so let's listen to that, how that sounds in the mix now. Okay, it's probably a little loud, but I really like that effect. Okay, it's much wider. Um, it's allowing the kick and bass, um, it's space in the middle and it's just floating over uh, the side of the mix. I think that sounds really cool. Now, if you haven't got Kilo Hearts, um, we can use exactly the same effect um, in using the delay plugin. So I'm gonna load up a normal delay here. Okay, and we can hear that um, it's just delaying like we'd expect. I'm going to put all the wet and dry uh, to 100%. I'm going to take the feedback down to zero. I'm going to take this link off and I'm going to unbeat sync these. Now I'm going to bring this left channel here all the way down to one millisecond and I'm going to choose my delay on the right channel. So let's have a look what we had on this one. About 15 milliseconds. So let's do the same here about 15 milliseconds, there we go, and let's listen to the effect. Okay, let's try that one again, and the delay. Okay, it's achieving pretty much exactly the same effect. Now there is one difference here. Our left delay is delayed by one millisecond. We can't go down to zero on this. 
Um, so this, what we can do to counteract that is then come to our um, track delay here, just press this little D um, on the right hand side. And what we can do is we can increase this by one millisecond um, and then that's kind of counteracting and cancelling out the one millisecond delay here. Okay, sounded pretty good. Um, so that is using the Hass effect and that's one method we can use. Um, it works really, really well, particularly with things like that, little glitches, synths, things you'd like to be really, really wide. Um, the Hass effect works really well. Now it's worth saying, the longer the delay time, kind of the wider um, it's going to sound. So if I bring this right down to, let's say 1.5, it's almost mono again, okay? So it doesn't sound very wide at all. Let's go the other way and put this all the way to, let's say 60. Okay, you can start to hear that's almost sounding like a delay now. Um, let's go all the way to 300. Okay, and now that's just a normal delay. But anywhere between sort of 15, between 30, no more than really 50, 60, um, you're gonna be able to achieve that Hass effect without the two separate channels sounding like uh, separate pieces of audio. Okay, so let's put that back down to 15 where it was. Okay, cool. Now the last thing I've done here is I've used the utility uh, plugin to take out all of the side information under 500 hertz. Okay, that's just not needed. Um, it's gonna create phasing issues on our mix. Okay, still sounds nice and wide. Um, now I wanted to talk um, about another way we can um, use this has effect um, but actually on ascend so let's say that i'd like to make this sound nice and wide um, but i also want to keep some of the mono information what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up um, ascend here and i've called this wide one now the first thing i've done is add some saturation and i'll explain why in a moment now i've got our has effect um, here again and our a base mono effect to take out all of that side information. Um, now, once you've set up the Hass effect, um, it's worth saving this as maybe even the default preset or um, just saving as a preset, preset so you can just quickly um, drag it in each time. Um, okay, so let me send to that. Let's have a listen. Okay, we should hear. It's a slightly different effect, but it's still nice and wide. Um, now, the reason I've got some saturation um, on here is to kind of break up um, the audio um, a little bit, um, because if we're sending um, that mono signal uh, to our Hass effect, um, on our, our information in the middle and our information on the left and right is now exactly the same um, and that can cause phasing problems. So if we add a, a little bit of breakup using the saturator, that can often get rid of those phasing problems. Um, now, another way to do this, and I've done this uh, on Y2, is we can also add uh, like a modulator, something like a chorus. So chorus we know plays with the pitch, um, so now we know that these waveforms, when we send this waveform um, to the left and right channel, it's now slightly modulated in pitch, which means the wave isn't going to be exactly the same. Same with the saturator, breaking it up a little bit more, um, and we're not going to get any phasing issues. So if I send it to this one, we should get the same effect there. And now I'm going to make this a little bit wider, about 15. Okay, so you should be here, able to hear that working on both channels there, making things sound uh, nice and wide. Okay, um, now the next way, I was gonna say as well, so I'm gonna do that for these hits here as well. So let's just listen to these. I wanna, I wanna keep the mono information of these, um, but I also I wanna make them a little bit wider. Okay, so they already got a bit of width in them, but um, I'd like to make them a little bit wider. So I'm gonna send them to that um, set wide two there. Okay, we can hear the chorus there. So we're just gonna bring that down. 
Okay, it's adding a nice amount of width to those, uh, not too much, um, and it's just complementing that sound. Let's have a listen to that in the mix. Okay, so we can hear those synth elements now sitting really, really wide in the mix. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about on these sends and returns, this first one is gonna be my wider wide, and this second one is my slightly less wide wide. Okay, now we'll have done using the utility plugin. I've kept this one at 100% width. Um, and then this one here, I've adjusted the width just to bring it in slightly. Now I could also play with the delay time and have a shorter delay time on one channel, and a longer delay one delay time on the other. Up to you how you do it. Um, you should achieve similar effects um, with both, but play around and see which one you like best. Now the reason um, for doing this is this is really, really good for getting a certain group of instruments all in the same space in the stereo spectrum. So let's say that I wanted all of my synths to be really wide, and then I wanted some percussive elements not to be that wide, still have a bit of stereo width, I could then send them to my second wide here. So it really helps to group, uh, group instruments um, and sit them in the same space on the stereo spectrum. Uh, so it's a really useful tool. You can set up as many as you want. Um, you can sometimes have, I find up to three works. Um, two is usually enough. I usually have some really wide stuff, usually synths, um, then some stuff which is somewhere in the middle, and then I'll have a few lead elements um, that will have their own space. So I'll use different techniques for these lead elements. I won't send them to any of these returns. I'll use something else to create um, some width. Um, and then that way I find that those lead elements then have their own space. Everything else is at one point or another or in the middle. And then those lead elements, they can sit as kind of a priority in the mix. So uh, talking of those lead elements, let's have a look at a couple. Now this is um, a plugin that a lot of you may have. It's from the Sound Toys bundle. Okay, it's called MicroShift. Now, MicroShift um, is particularly nice on things like backing vocals. It's nice on synths. In this instance, I'm using it on a little guitar chop. Let's have a listen to this guitar chop with out the MicroShift on. Okay. Um, this is sampled um, from a song and there's quite a lot of low end and percussion on there at the moment. So uh, let's try and ignore that. Okay, yeah, there's like a, a kick in there as well. Um, I'll get that rid of that later with some EQ. But let's put the micro shift on. Okay, so we can hear um, somewhere in here, it's probably doing something similar to the Hass effect. Um, we can choose how much of the mix we want in. We can choose a focus frequency um, that we'd like to kind of focus the width. Um, and then we can choose how tight or how loose um, the delay is. Um, so do we want it sounding like it's wide but tight together? Or do we want it sounding wide, but it's a bit kind of out of sync um, with the original audio? And then we can detune the audio as well. So things like synths, it's really nice to push the detune and make them a little bit looser. Um, and then sometimes with more snappy um, elements, you can obviously tighten them up, but still get a bit of width. So that's something you all might have. It's a really good tool um, because you get to dial in exactly how much you want and you maintain all of that original um, information. Okay, next we have a little fill. Let's have a listen to this. This is just a little snare. Okay, let's get rid of what I've done there. Okay, so it's got some reverb. It's being sent to my room reverb. Um, let's have a listen to it in the mix. Okay, so at the moment it's just kind of flicking in the center. Um, with this, same as that glitch effect, I wanted it to be in a similar space. But with this one, I've decided to send it to a ping pong delay. So this is just the H delay from Waves. Um, I would usually take out a little bit of the low information, uh, sometimes the high, but um, I wanted to keep the high in this one. 
uh, obviously set to 100% wet and then feedback time whatever you want I've just selected ping pong there that's the important thing so what that's going to do obviously normal ping pong effect it's going to repeat in the left channel and then the right channel and then we're going to get that sense of width Okay, cool. So we can hear that the original signal is banged down the center, mono, and then we have the left repeat and then the right repeat. Let's hear that in the mix. Okay, cool. Now, that works quite well, but I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like that it was originally in the center and then it goes to the left and then it goes to the right. I almost wanted it to be um, wide initially and then do the left and then do the right delay um, so what i've used and this is another ableton um, uh, stock plugin is the vinyl distortion now what we're going to focus on is this bottom section here um, and what this does is it distorts or saturates um, the side information okay and we can choose um, the amount it does that by so let's have a listen in solo Okay, so you can hear it slightly changed the character of the sound. It's added a bit of distortion, but you should be able to hear it's so much wider. Okay, now I really like that. So that's initially a lot wider, and then I think in the mix, um, it's just gonna have a lot more presence and stay out of the way of uh, the important information like the clap uh, that I've got in the center. I like that a lot. Now, um, I'd probably bring that down level-wise um, a little bit, uh, but just so you can hear how that works. Okay, so the next thing we've got is this little synth. Um, let's hear this on its own. It's just a little organ type thing, again, chopped up from a loop. Okay, and I've put it in mono. The loop had some stereo information, but I want it to be more in control of it, so I've put it in mono um, so I can then choose where I stick it in the stereo spectrum so um, what we're going to look at is the tau chorus now this is a free plugin and it's fantastic it's um, the chorus that is based off it's either the juno 60 or the juno 06 i'm not sure which one um, but it had a chorus engine built in uh, two designated uh, designated knobs like this and buttons like this and uh, you either had chorus one or two and it was very um, lush and um, famous sounding chorus so this is basically an emulation of that i'm pretty sure they do an emulation of the actual whole plugin as well which is supposed to be really really good um, so with this, uh, you can choose exactly how much width um, you want to add. You can choose the dry wet again, and then you've got a volume knob as well, because it does sometimes add a little bit of gain. So let's have a listen. Okay, loads more character and width. Now, this works really, really well on um, synths. Um, and it doesn't work so well on things with uh, a harsher transient. So I wouldn't use this on like claps or any percussion that I want to get wide. It works really well on elements that have um, less kind of transients um, and are a bit more sort of um, smooth sounding. So again, vocals doesn't always work particularly well on for creating width. I'd perhaps use something like micro shift over this, but for synths, this works really, really, really well. So let's have a listen to the difference um, of this in the mix with and without. So this is without. And with. Okay, so that takes up um, way more width. Um, it allows, allows those vocals to be nice and center and again, the kick and the clap. Now, I think it needs a little bit of low end removing from it. That's something for me to tidy up a little bit later. Now, rather than use um, this chorus let's see what that sounds like sent to our second send here so i've already got a little bit of chorus here um, and then the saturator and our has effect so let's see what this sounds like sent to that okay it loses um, a little bit of its clarity um, but i still like the effect i think perhaps i'd uh, get rid of the width and keep the width to 100% because um, it's uh, seeing as it's a synth and I'd rather have that um, nice and wide. That sounds quite good.
Okay, so uh, that could be an option for this synth as well, is to send it to this send here. So um, you can play around with the sends. Uh, what I could also do is I can make another send and I could just add that chorus um, to the send, set it as 100% wet, and I could just send some sounds to that. And using this stereo width knob, I'll be able to ensure that all of that, uh, everything I'm sending is at a certain place in the stereo spectrum. Um, so yeah, I'm finding that um, this is a really good way of creating width um, and being in control of your width and not having loads of elements in loads of different areas. Now finally, I've duplicated a um, clap here because I wanted to show you some of the phasing issues that can occur. So at the moment, this is just a nice standard clap. Dirty one. There we go. 909. Now, if I send it to this first width, um, and I'll take off the saturation, and I'll just have that Hass effect. Okay, you can hear a bit of phasing there. Okay, now that means phasing means that this is exactly the same signal, exactly the same waveform is being played at exactly the same time, and basically it cancels each other out. So one way of getting rid of phasing is to invert the phase. Um, another way of getting rid of phasing is knocking it slightly out of time. Or if you play with the pitch or like the um, character and um, tone of the audio, um, you then create a slightly different waveform. And then as they're traveling, they're doing slightly different things, which means they won't cancel each other out. So that's where the saturation um, can come in handy. But sometimes the saturation is not enough to get rid of the phasing. Um, so you have to use something like a chorus instead. So let's send that to our second width one. And we can hear there's not any phasing there. But it's created that nice amount of width and also um, this isn't set to 100 percent it's just set to 60 and i find for percussive elements it's much better to keep them uh, yeah if you can make them wide but it's much better to keep them tighter together um, um, more like a drum kit would be rather than really really wide it sometimes works um, but as a general rule it's nice to keep the percussive elements in a tighter space um, so yeah, so um, that's a couple of tricks you can use for creating width. Um, the Hass one, the Hass effect, uh, comes in really, really handy. Um, there's not really uh, anything you can't use it on, and it just creates so much width. And um, what I would think about um, when you are creating width is um, think about what you want your widest element to be. Um, and then kind of work in from there. We're always gonna have kick and bass down the middle of our tracks, um, but then synth elements, pads, backing vocals, they can be nice and wide. Um, and yeah, um, you can get kind of really creative with it. Um, if you want your mix sounding like a lot punchier, it's often nice just to have like one or two um, kind of places the um, elements are sat. So you would have your mono information, then maybe you'd have uh, your wide information, um, and that can work really well. And what you could do with that is you can pan things hard left and right. Um, so you could just pan like a, a hi-hat all the way to the right, or like a ride all the way to the right, and then like your crashes on the left. And doing that um, creates a really, really kind of tight and punchy sound in your mixes. But if you'd like to kind of, you know, stick things at various different points, this can work well as well. Um, and then, like I said, it's really, really good for then having lead elements um, and then having a separate space for them. One or two places for um, your kind of backing elements and kind of rhythm elements, whatever, uh, to sit at a certain space. And then that lead synth, that lead vocal, you can then give it its own space in the mix. Uh, the mix and it will help it uh, stand out and sound really present so um, i hope that's helped again just drop me a message any questions anything at all with that and yeah i'll catch up with you guys soon